All right, the recording has started. And this is the September 14th, 2020 cross plane community meeting. Uh, feel free to add yourself to the uh, attendees list if you are not already there. Um, let's hop into talking about the 0 0.13 milestone that we are actively working towards right now. The planned uh, release time frame is around 23rd, maybe 24th, somewhere around there. So that's uh, next week, uh, mid to late next week. Uh, we've been tracking issues on the organizational level project board, uh, but we can dive into some of the specifics uh, right here. Um, thank you, Dan, for accepting MoveOffice edition. And as MoveOffice types, it's like, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. So I don't see Casey here, but uh, Phil, would you like to please get us going with an update on the uh, provider acceleration code generation stuff? I know there was uh, some cool stuff with some of the spe uh, providers specifically too. Yeah, totally. So, um, so Casey is making progress on the provider acceleration, um, but then also helping out with um, the code gen for uh, native AWS and native Azure providers. Um, and so we had uh, you know, a cool hack session uh, last week with uh, J-Pipes from AWS. Um, and Jay's putting together a PR for um, adapting the ACK Cogen pipeline to um, emit a couple of cross-plane resources. And we feel that once that's done, um, we'll be able to just co-generate um, the whole thing. So um, and they have metadata from you know, like all the, the AWS services. So um, super exciting progress there. Um, so still more work to be done, but um, I think uh, Jason we put in together a uh, a branch called Crossplane um, in his uh, fork of uh, ACK for the code gen there. Uh, and that should be coming up here before too long. And then um, also, you know, working with um, a handful of folks um, out of the Azure ASO team. So um, you know, Dave and and Matt and Christian and Devin and George. Um, and so there's a, um, a PR opened up for adapting the Azure code gen pipeline to, to emit um, cross-plane resources as kind of initial design thinking around that. And so we've just been coming back and forth and providing some uh, feedback and collaborating together. And um, yeah, so that's, that's super awesome progress there. But then also for the Terraform wrapped code gen, um, you know, uh, that's still proceeding for providers that don't have cogen pipelines. Um, and so, um, yeah, so multiple fronts and uh, super exciting times. And, you know, the really nice thing will be is that with all of those <clears throat> providers being auto-generated, that um, you can then okay. those resources into your own, um, and your own abstractions with composition and cross-plane. So really nice to see kind of that, that consolidation around um, the cross-plane project, getting support from, from all the cloud providers there. Yeah, I think that's really cool, especially like the integration into the code generation pipelines that would, uh, you know, from the providers themselves that would be generating cross-plane resources from the, um, you know, from their like definitions of their APIs, like at the source, I think that's super exciting. Yeah, and it totally makes sense too for, for everybody involved because it just provides more on ramps to the respective clouds. Um, and that's all goodness. Yeah, win win. Cool. Uh, all right. Uh, move off. Do you want to give us a quick update about uh, Crossman Agent? I think it's been, it hasn't been too much focus on that quite recently. Um, yeah, I mean, the, there is this compose resource definition update PR. Uh, but it's been there I, for a while, I believe, waiting for final review. Uh, but yeah, uh, it works with the master branch now. So if people want to give it a give it a spin, they can do so with this PR. Uh, but there isn't uh, much of the sense from that. And question move off X. So should we just use the design uh, spec for the documentation on that? Or where's the best documentation for figuring out how to get up and running on that? Uh, yeah, I believe design doc is accurate, but like for like for actual commands and stuff, uh, there is a uh, comment on my first PR. Let me just link it. Uh, oh, great. Okay. Yeah. In that, you, you will see like, you know, small kubectl commands and stuff so that you can quickly uh, get to up to speed. 
I'll just I'll just uh, copy it to the meeting agenda. Okay. Awesome. Thanks, Mubafak. Sounds good. Uh, Dan, lots of action with the uh, update of the package manager. Do you want to bring us up to speed on everything that's going on there? Yeah, for sure. So um, let's see. I think it might have been since last um, time, but the the meta types were ma uh, merged a, a while back. Um, those are the types that are kind of like on disk where you specify how you want to build something um, in you know, in the package you're creating. So in your Git repo before you build it and push it and that sort of thing. Um, so those are not actually CRDs that are installed into a cluster, um, but we do want to have, you know, actual specs for being able to read those and evaluate them and that sort of thing. Um, so those have been merged for a while, uh, which is nice um, because they can kind of help you inform how to write a package while we're um, in this in-between stage. Um, Next thing is yesterday, uh, we went ahead and broke out the API types from the kind of large uh, package manager implementation PR and went ahead and uh, merged that. Um, so those actual API types for what you'll create in the cluster um, are now present. The reason for doing that early was um, this, you know, it's kind of related to the RBAC manager and some of that work as well. So going ahead and getting those in um, was helpful in that regard. Um, other things to note, the scaffolding for the crank command, uh, the crank CLI was merged. Um, so those are just basically empty commands right now. Um, but we went ahead and got that merged because Casey um, is helping me um, get some of that implemented. Um, so uh, he's taking a lot of the package building stuff, which is really great. Um, so I appreciate him doing that. I'm not sure if he's on the call. Um, but we had some good conversations around that. Um, so that'll be good to see land. And also now that those API types are implemented, uh, we can go ahead and follow up um, with adding the commands to, you know, list those from the cluster and that sort of thing. Um, and then the last thing is the, the actual implementation PR is getting pretty close. Um, I am just cleaning it up this morning um, and breaking it out to be a little more um, digestible and a little bit more easily testable. Um, there will be some follow-up PRs to that, uh, some related probably to the Helm chart structure um, and some related to hosted cross-plane mode, uh, which will really just involve plumbing down a, an extra client to um, the package manager, but it made it a little bit easier to digest uh, with following that up in a separate one. But uh, we are pretty close on that and we had a, a good demo last week. Um, so yeah, this should all be landing. It's pretty much right on schedule. Well, I think we'll want to, you know, add some documentation as well for this for folks to be able to build these packages and that sort of thing. That's awesome. Thanks, Dan. Super cool yeah. to see this coming online. Yeah, great progress there for sure. Yeah, and I noticed Muvafik, uh, he's taking the work around the, the kind of like unpack base image stuff. Um, and so did you want to give an update on that, Muvafik? Uh, yeah, I, actually I had one small question. Uh, but maybe we can we can uh, discuss it in the technical discussion session. So cool. Yeah, feel feel free to add that down to that section then, move off, and we can we can get that have that conversation when we get down there. Uh, cool. And then uh, Nick has been doing a, a lot of work on the uh, some RBAC management on autom automation. Uh, Nick, do you want to give us a quick update on uh, the latest on that one? Uh, yeah, there is a pull request open that adds. Um, so, so historically in crossplane, we have managed some opinionated RBAC roles uh, for for folks um, similar to the Kubernetes admin view and edit built-in RBAC roles. Uh, however, scoped to crossplane types and a little bit extended actually because we we would make admin view and edit roles for every namespace in the system um, that were actually uh, could be slightly different from namespace to namespace depending on how uh, crossplane was configured. Um, so we're breaking that functionality out of the new package manager uh, and we're putting it in a separate uh, pod that we're going to call the RBAC manager. Uh, so there's a design and a pull request for that. Uh, the idea there is that if you wanted Crossplane to not have opinions and not automatically manage your RBAC for you, you could choose to not deploy the RBAC mod, uh, manager or deploy it with a policy where it sort of manages less RBAC things than, than it might be able to. Um, without losing package manager functionality. So that it's just sort of decouples those two. Um, so the PR that is open at the moment uh, is to introduce the RBAC manager in general and allow it to automatically create RBAC roles for, um, for new composite resources. So if you add a composite resource, um, 
will automatically notice and create RBAC roles that allow, um, or update RBAC roles that allow the administrators, editors, viewers, et cetera, to use that. Um, it's only partially implemented at the moment because some of it does depend on the new package manager types. So this PR I expect to be merged soon, today maybe. Um, but as far as uh, as far as the community is concerned, it's it's not going to help until VO.13. There's a follow-up PR needed to make it fully functional. That, that sounds great, Nick. Awesome. Uh, yeah, so uh, let's see. I think uh, Ryan's on the call, Voss is on the call. Do you, uh, does one of you all want to get us updated on the latest uh, for Ohm Kubernetes runtime? Sure. Um, uh, there are not too much going on in the past two weeks other than some bug fixes, some improvements. And the one big thing I changed is, um, so nowadays, now the uh, the components doesn't have to use the same name, rely on the name convention of a CRD to re refer to the workload definition it is uh, it is implementing. So we introduced, uh, not a, it's not a type, it's not in the spec and it's not in the strongly typed, but uh, we use a webhook to support uh, a type field in the component so that uh, uh, user can refer back to a, a workload definition explicitly. It's something so that we, we untie this, untie this uh, conventions to make a workload definition to refer to multiple components are possible. Uh, no, oh, sorry, it's a multiple workload definitions refer to the same schema a possibility. Uh, so it's it opened up the, in the, yeah, I, I think I, I mentioned last time that uh, it is ready to get into more stable state. Um, yeah, I think we are still on track on to do that. So please let, let us know when, when you're releasing uh, 0 0.13 or 13 or 14. Uh, when we get there, we, we can, we can uh, make sure we're all on the same page. Yeah, we're still shooting for the 23rd, I think. Um, it might move a couple of days out to give time to add more robust documentation, given that everything's landing all at the same time. But uh, sure. yeah, roughly roughly into the month time frame is what we're shooting for. Sure, sure. sounds yeah. good, yeah. And Ryan, are there any uh, like big blockers or you know pending things you think that um, need to get uh, finished off before you know uh, the Ohm Kubernetes uh, runtime can do a you know its its first like stable ish release? You know? Yeah, I am not aware of any. Yeah, we're we're awesome. good. Cool. So we can just like cut the release when it, when the time is appropriate. Yeah, yeah. That sounds great. Awesome. Uh, okay. Uh, let's see here. Um, I don't know if there's any specific updates besides some of the other items here that are in service of advancing composition. Um, I don't know if anybody wants to speak specifically to um, that wasn't mentioned last time, at least, about any any more progress on moving composition towards V1 beta 1 than speak up now. All right, so uh, uh, move up. Did you add these items for custom composition and like CDK's integration? Uh, yeah, so I, we have opened the draft design doc about custom compositions. And the first candidate is CDK's, where we will have, like, you will be able to basically use your CDK's app as the composition engine instead of Crossplane's own uh, format. Uh, yeah, so. We're working with AW, uh, guys from AWS uh, to enable this in Crossplane. Yeah, and just a little bit more color on that. So, um, you know, like Movopic said, we've been working with a lot over um, from AWS on, on CDKs. And so he's put together kind of um, an initial uh, repo that um, basically has a new um, command to pack. It's called um, CDK, it's pack, and it would basically generate a sidecar image that would contain the CDK, it's program, and then through a simple sidecar protocol, which basically just spins up like an HTTP endpoint um, that the custom controller can talk to, the custom composition controller can talk to. Um, and it'll just feed in the inputs to the composition, and then CDK, it's will render dynamically behind the Kubernetes API line, um, then return the resulting uh, YAMLs that would be applied into the system with um, Prune Semantics. So um, you can definitely check out uh, the link here. And then 
I think that um, this references the issue if you scroll down. Uh, there it is. Um, yeah, 1678, the open issue. Um, second down in the comments. And so that basically just gives a little bit more background on kind of what's going on. So, yeah, super exciting. Yeah. So go ahead and move on. Mike. Yeah, I was just going to say uh, the, the final experience we would like is that like CDK's CLI will include a, a comma, command. Maybe it will be like pack or some something additional uh, that will uh, basically print a composed resource definition, uh, the cross plane type, and one custom composition CRD, which is also a cross plane type. And then once you apply those, you will get your CDK's app like acting as controller for your composition. So it will be a really, really uh, neat experience. Yeah, totally. We're, we're looking forward to this. This will uh, make it easier to dynamically render like variable numbers of resources as well uh, behind the API line. So um, yeah, super cool to see the different flavors of composition coming online. Very cool. OK. And uh, Rock, you had a bug fix here that you need to speak about? Yep. So. You know, we, we had an update with uh, update about the provider type. Uh, so basically, we, we deprecated the provider type and created a new provider config on v1 beta 1 level, but it does not have the region field. And so in some resource, in some AWS resources, they do not require the re region field in their requests. But during the client config, uh, they use that uh, region in order to specify like which region it is. So basically it's like when you created the credentials, like when you authorize to the AWS API, it actually decides on which region. And in the actual request, uh, you don't really see region at all. So this caused some problems since we removed the region from provider in some services like EC2 services, I believe all of them. For example, uh, right now in master AWS, you can't really create a VPC because it, it'll say just it, it will not be able to construct endpoint uh, without region, basically. So this, uh, so I am working on the on the fix for this bug, but yeah, uh, we have that. So. Cool, sounds great. Perfect. I'm basically right now going over like all of the managed resources that we have for AWS and testing them up and see which which one is needed and add it to spec field, like a region field in the spec. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, we don't want to have any any particular like regressions or anything from that. We want to make sure that that, that change you know, works for all the resources. So thanks for doing that. So Mubavik, we, um, we talked about this a little bit the other day. Um, you were saying that when you create a VPC, nowhere in your request is the region mentioned. It's not in the URL, it's not in the flags, it's not anywhere. And the, it figures out what region to put it in based on some default that your IAM role has configured or something? Uh, no, uh, it's based on the region that you have configured your uh, client, basically. What, is, what does configuring your client mean? When I hear configuring your client, I hear I told AWS CLI to be in this region. But, but what does that actually mean as far as the API is concerned? Like how does the data of what region get passed to AWS? Yeah, so it's basically in the AWS that any file that we all have like in our, in, our, in our local, if you do specify, you've got like default region. In the, like in the default pro, profile, you have also the region. So uh, in the API, when you configure it, uh, if you don't provide that field, it is basically empty. It doesn't really return an error. And during the actual request of like creating anything or describing anything, when it constructs the URL of the query, it looks for the client config. So basically, uh, I believe like if you don't have any region in your local right now, the AWS CLI also has the same experience. Like it will require you to specify a region during the setup instead of like, you know, creation of the VPC. Okay, I heard you just say in the URL. So if I just if we just pretend that clients don't exist and we're just curling to work with the AWS API, the region goes in the URL. I believe so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, in that case, I believe it does make sense for that region to be a field of the managed resource. 
Yeah. yeah, I mean, I've I've also investigated like if if it's just like a URL property, like if any of the if any of the regions would work, uh, but that wasn't the case. So it actually, you know, like in some sense, region is treated like resource group in Azure. So even if like you know for some EC2 resources, like for example, Elastic IP, I wouldn't really expect it to have a region, but it does. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of region, uh, it's kind of resource group in, in, in some sense. Hmm. But by that you mean you can't, you, you can't specify a region other than a particular one? Uh, could you say that again? I, I'm, I'm not, I don't quite follow what you mean by resource group. I, I, I thought that you were saying that there was an implication there that that while you technically can specify the region, you must only pick a particular region, the same one as your account or something like that. Oh, so, so what I meant, like it's, it's like a, like in some cases, for example, Elastic IP, I wouldn't really expect to have any region, like intrinsically, like IPs wouldn't have any region and stuff. Uh, but like when, when we look at the API, like it actually requires a region. So like in some cases, even if it doesn't really make sense for the resource to have a region, it actually does. So like AWS treats is in some cases like a resource group, like logical grouping. So like um, in those cases, like we, we will, uh, we do need the, the region. For example, in IAM resources, there is no need for such that. Like without configuring any region, the client works because like they are not bound to any region. Uh, but in some services like EC2, like even though it doesn't make sense to have region, uh, it does require to specify that. Okay. Um, thanks. All right, cool. So I think that's everything for uh, 0 0.13 and progressing towards uh, that next uh, big release and milestone for, for the Crossplane project. So we'll stay on top of all that stuff we're discussing and keep on moving towards, uh, you know, next week, uh, late next week or, you know, figure out the hone in on the exact day, but we'll keep, uh, we'll keep making progress towards that to get 0 0.13 out. So we can move ahead on to the community topics section here. Um, Dan, I know you have a bunch of guests in the pipeline for TPS. Anything specific you want to share or is that, that good enough? That's pretty much it. Uh, I just note that the, uh, the main reason for not having episodes the past few weeks is that while we're in this transition period, it would be like kind of strange to, we, we could either say like, oh, this is how things are gonna work and you can't use it now or this is how things currently work and this is gonna be irrelevant pretty soon. And th there's some uh, leeway in between there, um, but also just for the 0 0.13 push, most of them have been deferred. Um, but as Jared mentioned, a product of that is that we have a lot of good people uh, lined up. Uh, and I think I've mentioned this one before, but we specifically have Source Graph uh, on the calendar um, as probably our next one. Um, and that should be a pretty cool one. So hope hope some people can tune into that one. All right. Uh, awesome. I'm looking forward to the next episode there. Um, all right. So with the CNCF um, uh, onboarding there, um, the Linux Foundation IT study have the, all the DNS information. I have not heard that it has been cut over or they have not needed more information uh, since, since the, all the transfer code and zone file was, was uh, sent over there. But we definitely will want to make that transition to you know, the Linux Foundation hosting or managing our DNS for us for crossbind.io with uh, no or minimal to no interruption to the crossbind.io site availability. So we'll work with them when that time comes. Um, quick note on KubeCon North America. Uh, historically, all CNCF projects have gotten a uh, session for the maintainer track, like an intro session or a deep dive session. And they made a bunch of changes for uh, the upcoming KubeCon virtual event for North America in November, where um, there is now only a single session for CNCF projects. Uh, so there's no intro or, and deep dive session. And it's uh, also no longer available for sandbox projects. So unfortunately, since we're a sandbox project, we do not get a maintainer track session 
for KubeCon, the next upcoming KubeCon in November. Um, hopefully we'll get some talks so, uh, accepted from the, <coughs> the call for proposals that we uh, submitted stuff for a couple week, I don't know, a month or so back maybe. Um, so we'll have our fingers crossed for that, but we do not get a maintainer track session, session uh, anymore since that's a new change in policy. Uh, something else I wanted to talk to us. I was uh, on the phone this morning with some um, with CNCF representatives uh, for the for the Ruck project, um, and they mentioned that the uh, community bridge program is ongoing. Uh, they could still accept project ideas for that. So basically, the community bridge is um, very similar to Google Summer of Code, uh, but it's just operated specifically by the by the CNCF, so it could be a year round thing as opposed to only a summer thing. And so, you know, it's a, basically an opportunity to, if we have any projects that would be, you know, good for uh, like university level students or, you know, intern type of thing uh, where, you know, it's a mentorship opportunity where the, uh, where the mentee can, you know, work on a real project and submit real code to the Crossplane project, but also ramp up and get some guidance from, you know, mentor from the community to kind of get their career started and, um, you know, contribute and know what it, you know, kind of get the experience of what it's like to be part of an open source project. So, um, you know, if we have any ideas for projects that might be a good fit, um, you know, I think that it's, it's kind of in between, there's a line in between, you know, it's not just like a single bug fix that you want to rip up somebody on. It's not, you know, a super complicated, really deep, you know, pushing the envelope type of project, but kind of maybe somewhere in between there. For, you know, I think it's a, at least a couple months that the contributor would be on board and participating and they get a stipend and such as well. So I've done the, I haven't done Community Bridge, but I've done the Google Summer of Code multiple times now. And the general experience of having a, uh, you know, young uh, contributor, you know, get into open source and start to get their career started and contribute, you know, meaningful code is, is always super rewarding. So it's, it's pretty fun. Um, it either helps the project, how to grow the community, get a new contributor, et cetera. So if anybody does have any ideas for what might be a good project there, um, either let me know or we can open a PR. Anybody's welcome to open a PR to the community bridge um, section of the CNCF mentoring repo. So let me know if anybody has any ideas there or wants to put anything on there. So uh, we don't have any specific PRs listed here. Uh, oh, there, were there any other community topics, by the way, that uh, folks uh, did, did not get a chance to add to the uh, agenda doc? Oh, I have a question. Yes, Kelly. Yeah, I was just curious about that. Uh, I heard there was a new CLI you guys are working with and the current one, you guys are just kind of ditching it and going with the new route. I was just kind of wanting to hear a little bit more about that and what's the state and I don't know, have a little advertisement about it. <laughs> yeah, Dan's been working a whole bunch on that recently. Dan, do you want to do talk to talk about that? Yeah, for sure. So, uh, you know, in terms of like functionality, it's going to be pretty similar. One thing you can't do with the current, well, you can do with the current CLI, but it's not as robust, I guess, or it's not using the ex the new package format um, is build and push those packages as easily. Um, so that's going to be a real focus of the new one, um, as well as, you know, the, the package types are changing. So there will be explicit provider and configurations. Um, but in terms of, of, you know, the the usage of it will be pretty similar, um, but it will be distributed, you know, and versioned with Crossplane. Uh, so a little kind of like similar to how Cube Control is. Um, but yeah, it should it should allow us to be a little more robust in, in our uh, offerings and, and the CLI in the future. Yeah, it, it may not actually change very much from the current experience. Um, at the moment, we have a, we have a repo called KubeCuddle, uh, sorry, not KubeCuddle, Crossplane CLI, uh, which adds a sub command to uh, KubeCuddle, uh, KubeCuddle Crossplane. Uh, and that's actually mostly just all shell scripts. Um, so one thing we wanted was to be able to move those to be written and go, uh, build, you know, use our libraries from uh, from Crossplane, etc. Um, 
So, so that will be deprecated. As Dan said, it doesn't have much, if any, functionality that uh, wouldn't be covered by this this new one. Um, and we're still figuring it out, but it's it's likely that the user experience will be the same. That it'll still be cut across plane, whatever some command sort of thing. Cool. Uh, yeah, I was a uh, I had a, a request or a feature request on it that's been there for a while because I was interested in. Uh, importing existing resources instead of having to fully type it out yeah so i can be lazy you know <laughs> yeah yeah I've, I've heard that from a couple of people and i think that's something we'd uh definitely want to support um you know per provider uh it's you'd kind of have to interact with some back-end facility or plug-in to be able to do that um to know how to basically get that information um you know from from the existing and then represent it and then have it hydrated basically from the, the cloud API. Um, so it, it might be interesting to think about how we could have some sort of like plugin for that, or if we had some sort of like endpoint in the cluster that you could talk to if you had that provider um, installed to help with that. But um, yeah, that's definitely a, a good point that we should go ahead and scrub all the issues um, in Crossplane CLI and make sure they're represented uh, either by moving them over or you know, opening ones for other functionality uh, in the main crossplane repo. So I'll, I'll make sure to go through that. Yeah, I think that uh, that import one uh, is importing resources, bringing them into the cluster is definitely something that we would like as well. I forget what it might even be tagged to help wanted. Um, as, as Dan says, the problem is mostly just that doing it in a sustainable way is quite hard. Um, architecturally, it may not make sense to have our CLI tools start to have you know, go types for every possible provider linked into it sort of thing so that it knows how to make a resource. So figuring out, like Dan said, if we, if you know, whether we add some API endpoint to cross plane that like requests it to like go and make it re resource or something like that. It's, it's a, it's a challenging thing to do is the main reason we haven't done it rather than because we don't want to. Yeah, I figured it was, I already, I kind of pulled that thing and realized, yeah, I was uh, just bash scripts and uh, I even tried to write my own, but then I did realize, yeah, that's a lot of work because I'm only working with AWS and I realized you guys would have to do it with like Azure and GCP and all these other ones too, right? Yeah. yeah. One, one thing to mention there though is that, you know, if, if we make progress on, on generating these, then it's possible we could have an interface and generate the, the same kind of thing for, you know, importing resources as well. Um, but yeah, I think that's a little farther down the line, but definitely something that uh, would be great to support. Cool. Right on, Kelly. Thanks for bringing that up and, and you know, getting. Uh, it's always good to have your feedback on a number of things too. By the way, so I appreciate that for sure. Thanks. Uh, all right. So yeah, I think we can head on to the optional time for deeper technical discussions section. Um, so in this section here, um, you know, as mentioned, it is optional. So um, you know, these are more you know minutia details about specific technical issues um, going on right now. So anybody who wants to drop off is more than welcome to. Uh, before we kind of dive down, dive down into some of these lower lower level conversations here. Well, yeah, I have to get back to work. So uh, you guys have a great day. Thank you. So it's right on, Kelly. Take what's care. Going well, on. Thanks, Kelly. Yeah, keep it real. Yeah. Have a good day. You too. Um, yeah, so actually the, like, the question is answered by Daniel there, uh, so I just want, want to make sure, like, in which, in which step we do it, because, like, in the, in the format doc, uh, that Nick put up, it was, like, it was saying, uh, the unpack should filter resources via this path, and right now the implementation that I have does that. So I just wanted to ask, like, whether uh, we should do it because, like, in implementation, how it how it's uh, how it's done right now is like, first it reads the crossplane.yaml, like with all the parser and all that stuff, and then once again it actually constructs another parser that has like the argument for like skipping the path that is like read from the crossplane.yaml. So like that didn't really uh, right with me. So I wanted to check, but I can see Daniel already commented that it should be in the build step which makes sense uh, to me yeah yeah and, and nick obviously since you worked on the format doc there feel free to jump in here but my thought is you know one of the advantages of having it be the 
you know, named crossplane.yaml is that we can actually just like get that file before parsing the whole thing. Um, so what I imagine is on the um, kind of like crank side of it that we'd actually just open crossplane.yaml file, read that, and then we'd copy over um, in that step for the reasons I mentioned in the comment there. Um, and then uh, potentially in the unpack image, uh, you could just use, you know, like the file system back in for the parser and just do with whatever is given there and say like, I was given something bad, you know, if, if it doesn't work for you there. I, I will say that the intent of the ignore, I mean, you know, I, I didn't, didn't spend days and days thinking about this feature to be honest. So, you know, maybe it just shouldn't be there or whatever, but um, the intent of the ignore thing was you have a directory on disk and you've got a bunch of example YAMLs in there or something like that. That's like, here's an example of how to install this thing. You probably don't need to put that into the OCI image that delivers the package because it's never going to come out the other end of that. So I think to Dan's point, yeah, my, my assumption would have been that as far as the unpack image is concerned, those things that are being ignored should have never got into the OCI image in the first place. So I, it, it, could, it would be, I would feel okay if the unpack image assumed that Crank just didn't put them there, basically. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, one thing to note there, though, is that the OCI image will be like, uh, from what I can tell, like Crank will generate a Docker file, and then like this Docker file will be built, and that will include like the whole package. But like in that Docker file, it could be a little bit challenging to say like, hey, this directory is excluded. So maybe, uh, I don't know, like, I don't think copy method has uh, some exclusion arguments, uh, but I guess we can, we can figure it out somehow. Yeah, I mean, if, if we need to get rid of this, um, this ignore stanza for the 0.13, I don't think that's the end of the world sort of thing. It was a nice to have rather than a critical feature of the, of the file. Yeah, I would say I would say from your perspective, though, move off like, that you can operate under the assumption that you don't have to ignore things. Cool. Thanks. Cool. Yeah, that, sounds, that all sounds reasonable. Um, Nick and move off like, did you all get enough time you think earlier about the uh, AWS region discussion? Or did you like, like feel a little rushed uh, and not really get quite some closure on that? Or do you feel okay with it? Um, we actually discussed this. Uh, a while ago, I guess, right, Nick, uh, last week, I believe. And like, we made the decision that we will add spec fields. Uh, so, yeah. Okay, that sounds good. Um, yeah, I'd prefer to take this offline. I was, I was so that, that solution sounds good. The only thing that is really, that I, and Mufabak and I have a one-on-one -on -one after this anyway, I don't understand how this works from the AWS API. Um, I don't, I, I keep hearing that the client knows the region, um, but, but my, my binary on disk on my laptop, knowing what region a thing should be, <laughs> doesn't communicate that to AWS. I want to know how that's passed along. And I think I'm being a bit thick, not understanding that, but I don't think we need to spend uh, community time on that. I'm sure Movavik can explain it to me uh, out the band. Got it, cool. Yep, just want to make sure you all had the time for that. Sounds good. Uh, okay, any, any other items in the, uh, for the agenda today that were not in the document? All right, cool. Then we can go ahead and wrap it up for the week and we'll keep uh, working on uh, 0.13 and we will uh, see you all online. Cool, thanks, Jared. All right, thanks everybody. Take care.